Welcome, everybody. It is another exciting episode of HomeKit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal and and the inventor of Stephen Fried Rice, uh, which does not have Stephen in it, but it's just regular fried rice that he puts AirPods into. It's a very weird invention. Uh, nobody eats it. It's it's very weird of you, Stephen, but, but you are the inventor of it, so I guess you can claim that. How you doing, yeah. man? I'm I'm doing good. Listen, I, I like fried rice. I needed to have my own spin on it, and uh, you know, I did it. You know, and I, I think I wonder. Uh, what, here's my question: Did you do yeah. it like on accident? Like you just dropped your earpod? Like you leaned forward and it fell out, or was it like purposeful? Like you know what this this fried rice needs? Some AirPods. Like which one was it? Everyone's dying. It was, a, it was an accident. I was trying to play it off. You know, sometimes okay. sometimes I get the it. AirPods they, they just slide out. You know, speaking of which, yeah, do you uh, do you ever find that? Like I, I use my AirPods Three and AirPods Pro Two interchangeably. Do they both stay in your ears one hundred percent of the time, or do you ever find one like slipping out into your fried rice? I'll say like ninety nine percent of the time that they stay in just fine. But there are times where I'm like doing something weird, like crawling underneath my desk for like connecting wire or something in the studio, and uh, yeah. you know it'll like slide out. Um, for, mm. for the most part, they're pretty good. It's when I'm doing something weird or at a weird angle that they will fall. But like, if I'm, if I'm standing like upright, like a normal human, they will right, stay in right. my ears. I was wondering when you said doing something weird, I was scared about what was going to come next, but then you were just like plugging in cables under the desk. <laughs> that's not, that's not that weird. You know, I'm out in the yeah, backyard and milking a chicken. And then next thing you know, my AirPods are falling out. I didn't even know you could milk a chicken. I, I haven't seen that. You know, you I've can, seen, never mind. I'm, I'm not going to go. You, got with goat. <laughs> you can milk an almond. <laughs> You can milk a cashew. Surely you can milk a chicken. I wouldn't want chicken. Milk. I was just thinking of meet the parents. Thing. Yeah, I know. I know the line you were thinking of. <laughs> I'm not saying it either. Not doing it. Not doing it. Everyone, let's, everyone uh, let's listening pull. knows what what the line is. So we'll just that's right. We'll just, that's everyone right. knows. Let's pull out of this nose dive and uh, let's just say that <laughs> no, on you know we don't have them in hand right now as we speak. But I'm sure on the next episode, Andrew and I are going to have plenty of thoughts on the. HomePod 2. It looks like everybody's calling it HomePod 2 on YouTube and such. And there were some early reviews last week. Everyone basically saying, sounds just as good, maybe tiny, slightly bit better. No one can really tell. Series faster because, you know, it's the same chip that's in the HomePod Mini. And, uh, you know, it's a high-end or, you know, expensive, according to some reviewers, a smart speaker. And uh, it's got a removable cable. So that's cool. Anyway, that's the, that's basically the HomePod yeah. reviews. Well, we'll talk about it. The Next um, time. the cable, I believe. So if if you ever did replace the cable, so of course it's got like the the kind of like the cover that covers the hole, and it's a nice braided yeah. cable, color match to the HomePod. But that's right. Should it but. ever break or get damaged, uh, not only is it replaceable, but it'll use a standard uh, C seven cable, which I believe I think I believe it's C seven. They're like the figure eight shaped ones. That usually work with things yeah. like your PlayStation and things like that. Apple so if TV? you have a spare one of those, which a lot of people do, you could just plug that in oh. and you can use that instead. So that's pretty nice. You don't even have to use Apple's uh, proprietary cables or nothing. Just a standard C7. That's pretty nice. All right, Apple. I we appreciate the standards. Very cool. But we'll give our our professional opinions next time as we have the HomePods in hand. Now, we do have some uh, some matter news, some things matter, and we've got some new devices. So let's talk about smart things, Samsung smart things, the app for iOS. It now supports matter, and you can add matter devices now directly to the smart things app, which is Samsung's uh, smart home thing, uh, you know, or you can add matter devices to your home app because home supports matter now, too. Tell me, Andrew, is there a reason, I mean... If you buy a Matter device and you're all in on HomeKit like we are, I mean, would I have any reason to add a Matter device to Smart Things? Or, I mean, so just... again, this is this is looking to the future when things are nice and things play well together. Um, I, I can see this I being useful for people who have Samsung devices in their home. So, like right now, for me, right. I I have multiple Samsung TVs. We have the Samsung washer and dryer that work with Smart Things to get alerts when they're right. done. Um, right. I also have like the Samsung smart fridge, the family hub smart fridge. So it's got the big screen on there and you can boop it with your fingers and, and add pictures and draw on it boop and it. all things like boop that. It. And we love those things, but 
yeah, obviously they're a separate app from your HomeKit stuff. So in the future, if all your devices supported Matter, you'd be able to control all of your HomeKit slash Matter devices from the SmartThings app where you're controlling your other devices in your home, such as your washer and dryer and your Samsung TVs and your Samsung fridge and all those other things like that. So there's that cross compatibility there. Uh, also for anyone who's using like the, if you wanted to branch out from HomeKit and use like the smart things hub, you can set that up through the Samsung app, add any matter devices through there. There's, there's situations where it can be useful for certain users. Now, let me ask you something. If you have a smart things hub that supports matter, does that hub get surfaced in the home app? And if so, is it possible then to use SmartThings devices, maybe older devices that are not Matter specifically, but because they connect to the hub, do they surface in the home app? Does that make sense? It does, and I would say yes. Like I, I know they just have a new hub, mm. um, but yeah, and that's the same thing with any Matter hub, right? So if you have a Matter hub and you add uh, devices to it, I can't promise every device is going to show like in Matter. Um, like that are connected because there's going to be devices that maybe connect to a hub that aren't like matter supported yet. Like, if, uh, like appliances, of course, are not supported in matter. Robot vacuums are not supported in that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. there's, there's hubs out there like the Akara ones that are going to be supporting matter, but you have things like a pet feeder that connects to that hub that won't work in matter because a pet feeder is not a matter, uh, device category as of yet. Right. So, Yes, I believe like if you, once the hub is updated, support matter, it can show in the home app and added accessories to that hub will work with matter, but not everything is going to be matter compatible. Okay. That, that's, that's what I was feeling, but I just wanted to check. Okay. Well, that's very cool. And then speaking of matter, we do have another a, a matter device. This is now the TP link Tapo Tapo, maybe Tapo. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi smart plug matter. 16 bucks, pretty inexpensive. Uh, right now it's on sale, at least as we record, but you can get it. And because it is Matter, you can add this to your home app. And it's interesting, I think, is this the first like Matter-only device that's now available that maybe could work in home? Am I correct? Maybe? Well, I mean, you have the you, the Eve Energy is already out there. That supports yeah, Matter. Yeah, but that's... But that's HomeKit. Like, that was HomeKit and then added Matter support. I feel like this this is like no HomeKit. Men, you know, this is not an Apple Home device or HomeKit. This is a Matter-specific device, and uh, but you can use it. Like, you should be able to scan this code right in the Home app and be good to go. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, the Maris one is for sale, right? But I don't know if it's shipping yet. That right, still might right, be right, right. pre-sale. Um. Okay. But the Maris one has the energy monitoring, and I was I was trying to check, and I don't see I don't see that here. So the the TP Link, the Topo P one two five M, does not have the energy monitoring stuff built in. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, this is I don't know if this is shipping right away. It, it, I mean, it says buy, like you're buying it. So Let's oh, see. it kicks Let's you over see. to Amazon. Oh, so yeah, there this, it I, is. I can have this tomorrow. I can have this tomorrow. Look at that. You can get it. You can get it. Matter device. Okay. Maybe I'll get one of these and uh, try it out as my as my first matter device. You know what I mean? This would be my first uh, <laughs> matter only deal. That'd be uh, that'd be interesting. Okay. So we'll okay. Like Twenty bucks. I have a question okay. for you, Stephen. Is uh, oh boy. And what what is the difference in the TP Link world between their Topo line? In their uh-huh. Casa line. Casa. <laughs> uh, Casa with K. Because they both exist. They both, both there's things in each of them that work with HomeKit or Matter in this case right. too. Um, right. What, 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 what? <laughs> the one starts with a T, one starts with a K. I mean, that's, that's the deal, right? I, I really have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea what the difference is. But now I would because I'm looking at their topo here. line right now. They got a pan yeah. tilt security camera, twenty five bucks. They've got a the Apple Home Smart Plug four pack for thirty six right. bucks. Right, There's a light strip. 
doesn't work with home kit it's 25 bucks like they've got some some Ooh. different devices there but then there's also the um casa line 2 which i yeah. believe there's like the light switches in the casa line there's the outdoor plug and i believe some of these cuz i'm pretty sure i have a box of them that just arrived right. um they work with home kit like there's an outdoor smart plug so i don't, I don't know. know i it's it's a I brand new thing it's a branding thing. One thing I do want to mention too. So this is a matter smart plug. Now, because it's matter, it should be like, it has to have thread, right? Because thread is the matter protocol, but interestingly, it doesn't like, what's that? It can be Wi-Fi. It's got oh, Wi-Fi it can, right there. Oh, it can, okay. So this, this would not have thread connectivity then. Like this is Wi-Fi. Okay. Hey, Wi-Fi hey. only. It looks like it. I mean, that's that says Wi-Fi. I mean, with with Matter right, right. right now, it's IP based, I believe. So anything that's going to be IP based, so Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Thread, because Thread is uh, IP based, um, will all gotcha. work. So Bluetooth, Zigbee, those don't, but the other ones will. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, because I'm gonna talk about plugs in a little bit, because uh, I got tired of my plugs disconnecting from home, and so I got some different ones. <laughs> so we'll get to that though. <laughs> Uh, also now available, the Philips Hue table lamp. We talked about this a little while ago. This is a rechargeable, like battery powered table lamp. So you can get this. This is right here is from Lowe's. You can get one for $160. Well, currently it says this item is out of stock, but you can go on Amazon and this, oh, there's only one stock left. I don't know if this will still be in stock by the time you hear this episode. This is the two pack <laughs> uh, for the Go table lamp. And, you know, when I first saw the pricing, I was like, why is this so expensive again? But again, it's because it is a indoor outdoor use. You charge it up, it's battery powered. And so you can bring it wherever you'd like. If you'd like a decorative table lamp on your patio, when you go out there, you can bring it out there and uh, bring it wherever you like. So two for 300 bucks or one when it's in stock at Lowe's for 160. Change they also have it uh, out of stock at Best Buy too. Steven. Ooh. Oh, we can add that link too if we if we want to add those because people can kind of shop around. But um yeah, so the way that this thing works is there's a little pedestal, a little base that sits on like your your nightstand or something. So you have a little nightstand light that looks very pretty. You can use um it's got the full color support, all of that. But then yeah, you can just pick it up and carry it with you. So maybe right. you, you got a tinkle in the middle of the night and you don't want to turn on the lights on. You can just pick up your little table lamp and carry it with you. You got a little night light to like, walk around your house with. Um, the top funny. is also touch sensitive, so you can adjust mm. the 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 brightness or whatever on the top. It supports like the adaptive lighting modes, I believe. So it'll it'll change okay. its color throughout the day. So like whiter, bluer, more energetic, warmer, sure. uh, yellow lights in the evening. But yeah, okay. battery powered, like you mentioned, it works indoor and outdoor, which is pretty sweet. Um, if you're doing mm-hmm. like a, you know, you decide you want to go have dinner outside, especially in the wintertime where it gets dark at five o'clock, you can take <laughs> this o'clock, outside yeah. and have some, some, okay. uh, some light with you. I think this is really cool. They packed a ton of tech into this. I mean, for $160, it's not cheap, but compared to the Go, sure. like the Go you pick up and it's, it's just as it is, right? It still has right. the... It's just a, you know, a bowl, but it is what it is. I like this having all the touch controls, the water resistance, the inductive charging on the bottom. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now the Philips Go, it's a bowl. Like you said, I guess it can also like stand on its side, right? It's a little, uh. Yeah. It like tilts. Mm -hmm. There's a little stand on the back basically. Right. And this is battery. I I don't think there's really touch controls. It is. I'm pretty sure it might even like. It's been a while since I played with one of these. I think you it even actually like plugs in. Um, like there's like more of an actual like physical plug. It doesn't have like a nice yeah. inductive charger. There's no touch controls, nothing like that. Yeah, it's got the, it's got that physical plug. So that's interesting. What do I, I oh I have the bloom? I have the hue bloom. Yeah. Which is kind of like this, but like no battery, permanently connected kind of thing. So mm-hmm. and Cool, cool to see Hugh releasing new stuff. So very good. If you're going to be getting one of those table lamps, would be uh, curious to hear, uh, listeners. And uh, what, what are you going to use it for? Are you going to, like, carry it like a torch, like medieval times, through your uh, your castle so you can... Uh, Definitely going to go life. spelunking. Spelunking is the, the primary use case sure. for this. Yes. Sure. You could do that, too. Very cool. 
All right, well, we need to talk about Yuffie, the cameras, more in that saga. Very controversial, and uh, we'll cover that. Plus, we want to talk about some smart plugs, too. But before we do, we want to thank our sponsor for this week's episode, which is our good friends at Collide. You guys know the challenge with endpoint security has always been that it's difficult to scale. And when remote work took over, that challenge got exponentially harder. You need visibility into your fleet of devices in order to meet your security goals and reduce service desk tickets. But how do you get that visibility when different parts of your company run on Mac, Windows, and Linux? The answer is Collide. Collide is endpoint security solution that gives IT teams a single dashboard for all devices, regardless of their operating system. And Collide gives you real-time access to your fleet's data and can do things that traditional mobile device managers can't. And instead of installing intrusive agents or locking down devices, Collide takes a user-focused approach that communicates security recommendations to your employees directly on Slack. I've worked in places where they install those, like, user agents that are always running in the back of your Mac, and, like, it's super annoying. You can never quit it. And um, this, if your employees do something like save their passwords to their desktop, which Andrew does all the time, you know, it'll say, it'll send Andrew a private message in Slack. He'll say, Andrew, uh, don't don't save your passwords on your desktop. That's not very secure. You don't want to do that. <laughs> he loves when I use this example because, you know, it's true. It's true, yeah. So anyway, don't, it, you know, this is a great way to let, give you the control to your team and Collide will notify them in Slack the best practices to keep their data secure. And you can answer every question you have about your fleet without intruding on your workforce. So visit collide.com slash homekit to find out how. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash homekit. Follow that link. They'll even hook you up with a free goodie bag stuff, lots of goodies just for activating a free trial. So that's collide.com slash homekit to find out more. Our thanks to Collide for sponsoring this episode. Now, more news about Anchor and Yuffie, the Yuffie cameras. <clears throat> Remember, this has been a long time saga. Excuse me, I need to take a drink of water here. I want to tell a joke. <laughs> Andrew did not tell a joke for me. Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. Not even a knock knock. That's fine. All right. No. Nope. Uh, so, uh, Anchor has admitted. You know, before we had this saga, this guy found out that you can, like, pull up an Anchor video feed just by using, like, VLC player. If you had, like, the the, the uh, serial number and all this kind of stuff. And Anchor was like, well, you know, this, that, and the other. Well, Anchor has now finally admitted that Eufy cameras were never end-to-end -end encrypted. And that was something, again, that they claimed early on. And they said, sorry, guys. Uh, communication has not been great. We're working on implementing end-to-end uh, -end encryption and, like, plugging all these holes. But, uh, yeah, our bad. And this was in a series of emails to The Verge, and The Verge reported on it. But, yeah, Yuffie, uh, it doesn't, it's not a good look. Not a good look on Yuffie. What do you think, man? I mean, they're just admitting things that we kind of knew. Right. It's weird. But, it's strange it took this I long mean, to admit. It is weird. And then they apologize for like, their lack of communication. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't it's know. weird. I mean, I feel like that's a smaller thing you should be apologizing for in all of this stuff, which I'm sure they apologized for all their other problems. But yeah, uh, they say their plan now is to move things to WebRTC, which is encrypted by default. And they were, they're yeah. going to bring in outside security companies to audit its practices. But uh, it's like a fool me once yeah. thing, and I feel like we've been fooled right. more than once. Mm. Um, I like mm. their products; they're affordable and they support HomeKit. But not only like they did were. they do this, but they then the, like I don't know if you want to say they lied about it, but they weren't straightforward about what was going on. And right. we've talked about this for a long time. This isn't even new. This is like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, no. I, I applaud the Verge for keep pressing on them because they weren't answering the Verge. When the Verge kept bugging them about right. it to get answers, and they weren't getting anything back. Right. So I'm I'm glad that we have yeah. somewhat of a resolution that just says we're gonna we're going to fix the things that we did. Right. But um, it, it's just hard to to openly recommend them. Yeah, and this is you know I, I'm going to get into this in a second where I'm advising someone on a new like smart home build, like they're starting from scratch. I just say, I mean. If you're starting from scratch, you can go with all HomeKit secure video cameras. 
you don't get some of the higher resolution cameras like the Arlo 2K and 4K. You might not get some of the other features like, you know, detection of different objects or whatever as detailed or as good. But HomeKit Secure Video, there's no subscription fees. If you already pay for iCloud, you know, the iCloud Plus is the deal. And I don't know, you just not, I don't think you're going to have these kinds of weird uh, security things with HomeKit Secure Video. I mean, we've never heard of anything so far. It might also just be just a smaller user base. I imagine that the HomeKit Secure Video user base compared to like Ring or maybe even Eufy, I don't know. I mean, I know like if you go to Best Buy, you do see like a big Eufy setup. And so there might have been more organic, like just people buying these security cameras because they were there and they seemed cheaper. Uh, but I, I don't know. HomeKit Secure Video, man. I'm, I'm kind of all in on it. That's all I do at my house. And I got four. We just games. need some iOS 17, HomePod 17 mm. announcements that are going to bolster what it's doing. Like mm. fix your yeah. AI, fix your uh, machine learning AI stuff, your image detection, your lack of yeah. flagging motion. Um, there's some there's some mm. things that need to be, to be fixed up there. Uh, trigger alerts based on content, not blanket motion. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is, it my, is my doorbell camera, especially, which is the Logitech Circle View. It's been notifying me of a lot of packages that are not packages. Like, especially at night, it will say their package has been detected. And I'll go to the thing and like, it was a car that kind of pulled in the driveway at a certain angle. <laughs> so it's like package detected. So mm. I, yeah, I will admit not a hundred percent, but it, for me, it is good enough. Like it is actually good period. And it's good enough you know, whatever little bugs and quirks, like I'll deal with it. Home Secure Video has been good to me. So that's all I got to say about that. Now, what has not been good to me, Andrew, is smart plugs. I don't know if it was the architecture updates in uh, 16.2 that messed them up or whatever, uh, but I've had several HomeKit plugs, smart plugs, that just keep disconnecting. And it was, I don't know if I want to call them out, put them on blast, but... I will say I was just tired of resetting them. I was tired of resetting them. Not even, there weren't factory resetting. I literally just had to unplug it and plug it back into the outlet and it connected again. But it was like multiple times a week and I was just getting tired of it. And so I said, you know what? I'm getting a thread smart plug and hopefully that will just, we'll call it a day. Like that'll just be all I need. And so I got the Eve Energy, which is one of the more expensive smart plugs you can get, but it is thread. It is thread enabled. And so I got two of those. I replaced them at the beginning of this week. And so we're like four or five days into uh, me just having the thread plugs, replacing the two that kept disconnecting. I, it's just anecdotal, but I will say they have not disconnected and I have not had to reset them and they've been pretty great. So I mean, A, thread. If you're going to get any device, I would recommend getting it with thread. And B, I don't know, just don't stand for stuff that disconnects all the time. It's just, it's annoying. And if you're trying to have a smart home, like, I just don't care for it. And I do want to mention there was someone who said they didn't like the Eve uh, Energy because they didn't think it had a physical on-off button. Uh, because it, And it doesn't make it obvious. You know, if you use some of the other smart plugs, there's a big, like, power icon with a big round button on the side. And it's very clear that you can control it physically from the actual plug. The Eve Energy has this, too. It might not be super obvious, but the small LED light, that's like a status indicator, that is actually the physical control for the plug. And so you can actually click that little light button, and that also controls the plug. And so you can turn it on and off physically right there by clicking the little LED light, and then, of course, you know, control it with HomeKit and Smart Home stuff. So I don't know, man. Of all the, of all the smart plugs, that's why that Tapo one was curious, because I was like, if this thing is thread and it's inexpensive, maybe I'll try it out. But I'm... I want thread, man. I ain't doing it if it ain't got thread. That's where I'm at. I am fine with Wi-Fi. <laughs> I have no problems with Wi-Fi. And there's so many naysayers about Wi-Fi mm -hmm. ones. And depending, mm -hmm. I I think uh, Wi-Fi is uh, can be more reliable. I mean, thread is great, and it mm -hmm. can create the mesh network. But if you don't have enough thread devices, um, right? Like why? Like Wi-Fi. It can be perpetually connected, and you don't have to rely on any other devices to communicate to it. You don't have to worry about a route of, of information being sent. I mean, Bluetooth, yeah, I get it. But uh, I have no problem with the Wi-Fi ones. Well, 
And this was, so I have a power strip mounted underneath my desk here in the studio. And that is where these two smart plugs were. And you could say maybe the Wi-Fi doesn't reach under the desk that's like right there. Although every one of my other devices is just fine with Wi-Fi. And I actually have my Acara E1 hub, which is like the little USB-A stick hub. That is also in the same power strip under the desk. And that was my only Acara hub for a while. And it did fine connecting to every water leak sensor and contact sensor in the house. So I, I don't think that the location of these plugs would have been that big of a deal for the Wi-Fi. But yeah, either so way... to me, it sounds more of specific device issues or their chipset or their design versus yeah. the Wi-Fi. So I'm just saying, don't poo-poo the Wi-Fi. Sure, Devices are sure. the problem, not right. thread versus a Wi-Fi situation. Yeah. It was a Wiimote. Like you said, you have other Wi-Fi plug. devices that work fine in that same location. Mm -hmm. So it's clearly yeah. not your Wi-Fi that's the yeah. problem. No, it's no, the no, devices. No. I get it. I, I, I just said very softly the brands that they were. And so if you want to <laughs> go back 10 <laughs> seconds and you can listen carefully and see. Uh, but I, it's weird because I have those brands, smart plugs, the same exact model in other places in the house, and they work fine. I don't know what it was about this particular spot. That's why I mentioned maybe under the desk, but I don't know. Eve Energy, they're great. They haven't disconnected yet. I'll follow up if they ever do, and then I'll throw them out the window. Okay. Uh, what were we going to say? Are you going to say something? Smart plug. Well, I was going to say, I, I had a minor follow up to our to the bathroom stuff that I hadn't really mentioned. Oh, but as we we're talking yeah. about the smart plugs and, and control. So, two things. One, Yes. The uh, the relay switch is still working really well. There are these random situations, like one out of fifty, where it it doesn't uh, like turn on, and I just flip the switch again, and it and it does turn on. So really, really minor uh, times that that'll happen, but it's usually not an issue at all. Um, someone com someone sent me an email complaining like that's so dumb. Why would you put something in your wall that uses a battery? You're going to have to open it up to replace the battery. And uh, I mean that's fair. But it's just taking off the faceplate of a light switch to replace the battery, and the battery does last five years. So I'm I'm okay with with having to replace the battery when the time comes on that, uh, especially for as easy as this was to do. Um, but someone did, and I, I missed this because it was during CES, mm. I think, that they actually had messaged me right when or right after it when I was still in the like deluge of CES information. But someone had sent me a uh, a Twitter message to hold off for the the sense one the sense plus switches from mm. Nano Leaf to control my Nano Leaf bulbs, and that might have been the solution mm. from the beginning because it's uh, be. you're 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 at, you're going outside of the home kit area, um, right? To go with like their native stuff like Nano Leaf to Nano Leaf, so it would limit mm. me maybe in that way, but the switches should work with, with matter and home kit and everything. So all that should still work uh, natively that way, but that might be a solution. So maybe when the okay. sense stuff is available um, from Nanoleaf, I might try those just because why not? Okay. Interesting. Well, very cool. All right. And a uh, final thing for me, um, I had this uh, podcaster friend. He's again, starting from scratch in a new house, wants to do all the smart home things and so I had kind of a long call just going through all of the stuff that I have that I would that would still recommend everything from like the Maris garage door opener, which has been super solid, you know, Lutron light switches, if you, you know, want for reliability, you know, kind of did all the things and, uh, you know, going to be working with him and uh, I'll let you know kind of what he lands on. But a couple of things, I don't know if we've mentioned it uh, before or at least haven't mentioned it in a long time. And they're not specifically home kit. These are home bridge uh, related. And so, you know, you can use these in your home kit app or your home app if you use home bridge. But these were things that kind of like blew his mind. And so I thought it'd be interesting. Well, one blew his mind. And then one is a problem that I'll throw to our listeners. Maybe if you guys have any answers for him. But the first thing is this is uh, something called the valve controller. We have talked about this before, but this is the bulldog valve water controller this is something that like you put on your house and can literally shut the water off to your house and it is wi-fi connected um but what's interesting about it is if you were to pair this with a leak sensor 
You have to use HomeBridge to get this into your home app. But if you were to do that, you could literally have an automation where if a water leak sensor in your house detects a leak, that this thing literally shuts the water off to your home. And you could basically be protected from water damage and water leaks, even if you were away. Because that's the thing, you know, if you have a water leak sensor and it warns you of a leak, that's great if you're home and you can take care of it. But if you are away from home and your home is empty and, you know, maybe you have a friend or family member that can get there, but not for an hour or two, water is like the worst, you know, when it comes to home damage and water damage. And so this is like a really elaborate but viable way to protect your home from like water leaks and water damage where it will literally shut off the water to your entire house if it detects a leak. And uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. And he was like, well, doing that, you know, especially if you travel a lot, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing. So that's the, the which brand is that one. Okay. This is the Yolink. Y O L I N K. It looks like Yolink. Okay. I've not heard of those. So the there's, I've heard of uh Finn P H Y N. I want to say, and I believe if, if I'm remembering my brands correctly, I think that one is owned by uh, Belkin. I want to say it's, it's underneath Belkin's um, brands and yeah, they do the same thing. So they have like the sensors that you can do that uh, will monitor, but then there's also like the shutoff valves. There's two different versions of their shutoff valves that you can use. Yeah. Whoa. So they've got those. And then I'm also, I've also heard really, really good things of the, the Moen one. So there's a Moen one out there um, called just flow F L O. And this one is, it's very robust. I mean, Moen knows water. That's like their whole thing, but they have, yeah, there's the water monitor plus the shutoff valve uh, that they have. And they also have individual water sensors that you can place throughout your home. That'll pair with it. Yep, those fellas right there. Uh, so those are neat crazy. ones. I actually have um I wanna say it's Finn. Is it Finn? Yeah. Okay. I have the Finn one um upstairs that we use and it's just the monitor. So it's not the full shutoff valve, but it does let me know anytime there's an odd water flow. And we did catch it once. I had an old um smart faucet outside in our backyard and I had, uh, going into the winter, I had shut off the water valve on the front, but I had not drained the hose that ran to feed the, fil- the, the faucet in the back. And it had, uh, mm. it had frozen and, and like popped open and was leaking. So next day I know I get an, an alert saying there was like a low water flow and it had detected that that was, that that had busted and was leaking and it wasn't Jeez. completely shut on the front. So there was like this irregular water flow. So I was able to shut that off, uh, oh pretty quickly when I had gotten home and luckily it was like it was outside versus something that's happening inside. But uh, yeah, there's a few different ones out there that are, you know, none that are working directly with home kit because of the, the shutoff valve versus a sensor, but they are very cool and very useful to have. That's very cool. I'll put links to all of those in show notes. And uh, the last thing I'll say, so he's moving into this house. It wasn't a new build. Um, He's, you know, it's, it's a new house for him. And one of the things that were already there are contact sensors for an alarm system from alarm.com, but they are wired contact sensors. So the contact sensors are, you know, constant power. They're wired, which is cool. I mean, I, you know, I would love things that are constant powered so you don't have to worry about batteries or whatever. But to be able to use those in something like HomeKit, not, I'm not even sure what, if anything, is possible. So as we were talking about it, we did find this thing. This is called the Connected Alarm Panel Conversion Kit, connected with a K. And uh, we'll put a link to this in show notes as well. But it's basically a converter where you can take wired contact sensors, you put them into this panel, and then this panel makes them wireless. Unclear if it was like, and it talks about smart things, like you can get into things like smart things, home assistant, Alexa, or whatever. And so... Maybe there would be a way, I I would think, to at least get the contact sensors into the home app to be able to use with this kind of conversion panel. I would be curious if any of our listeners have experience with this or if there is another solution that is better or whatever. But I thought this was interesting and just tangentially related to 
when looking at alarm systems, we've talked many times about the Abode and the Abode IOTA. And like when it comes to security systems and HomeKit, that's kind of like the one really, really good option where you can also do 24-7 monitoring, but pay on demand, you know, pay for a month. I just wish that the Abode, you know, if you get the Abode system, you have to get their contact sensors for it to work within the system. And I just wish Abode... Uh, you know, would work nicely with contact sensors you already had. <laughs> like if you had the Eve or the Akara already in the home app, it would be nice if they all worked uh, with the Abode rather than having to like buy all new contact sensors if you wanted to get their system. So that's just an aside. But converting wired contact sensors to work in the home app, this connected thing seems like it's a solution, but I would love to hear from our listeners. If, if any of you have tried this or have any experience getting those wired contact sensors into Apple Home, uh, let us know. I'd be curious. So I thought that was interesting. I will say, to be clear, it's not a Bode's fault that the contact sensors don't work. That is a limitation sure. of HomeKit. You right, cannot right. use sensors from one company to trigger another alarm. Like the alarm will show in HomeKit, but it can only be triggered by their own sensors. So the same thing goes for Akara, as its, it's devices right. can be used as alarms um, as a Bode. So it just... Limitation with HomeKit at the moment. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. maybe Apple will open it up with with like something like Thread that can be more reliable. I think I think it's just because they they're connecting directly to the hub, like right. the Abode contact sensors connect directly to the Abode hub, and they're not right. relying on your home hub to pass information. They're not routing it right. through other devices. So maybe it's yeah. not. I don't know if it's a reliability or a security thing that that they're doing that, but maybe now that we have the red stuff, we could see things like communicating together more openly and we would be able to enable something like that, but we'll see. It'd be nice. So anyway, let us know, listeners, tweet Andrew or I, if you have any security system uh, thoughts about that. If you're getting the Hue lamp, you can tweet at us, Mastodon us. All those links are in the show notes. And of course, watch us, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. And uh, I've been showing all the visuals, vi visuals uh, <laughs> as we talk about stuff. And uh, you can see it all there. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.